All right, so check this out. This sample doesn't end where I want it to. So I'm going to take everything. I'm going to turn it off of repitch mode. So that I can... Line that part up. So now I can come back and line up individual parts to make sure they're exactly where I want them to be. And let's see what the rest of this has. So I can take that too. Uh, what I like to usually do is at the end of the phrase, use something like that. So copy it like twice and then at the end of like either nine bars or five, change it. Yeah. <laughs> ah, my job's calling me. Hold on. <laughs> Dang. We're calling, messing up my flow. Where were we at? Okay, so I just chopped this up. Sounds pretty cool. Uh, let's see what we can do with this part. Just do this, copy it, and that could be a chorus section. So there you have full verse and chorus. Oh no! And that's why you go back and listen to it. That didn't work correctly. But after that, it's when I start adding a beat to it. See here, I made a MIDI track. I put Impulse in it, which is under this little box here. Then you just start throwing your samples in there. Um, one thing I do when I'm recording MIDI is turn off the record colonization. You know, I, I'd rather have my music feel like me. I don't want the thing to just quantize it 100% and just be like, okay, there it is. I, just, I, I don't feel that, so... I don't know if I like this key either. Then what I usually like to go through is just record myself a little MIDI track here. Um, normally I play the track a little bit so like move this up one measure or something.
a ninth wonder technique like I like to call it so what we're gonna do is take a low pass filter um I think live has one but since I'm on a Mac I just use the one that comes with it which is under audio units Apple low pass a U low pass it's like real it's real simple filter um so if you're on a Mac just use that if you're on a PC pretty sure you can use the one that comes with live I've never actually used it the auto filter is probably what you want to use but I'm not really familiar with it but basically all I do is put the filter on the sample turn down the cutoff frequency leave the resonance wherever it sounds good but don't ever put it above it you start getting that and then basically on versus you automate it the turning it on and off and when the verses start you basically just turn it on gives it that classic ninth wonder hip hop kind of sound turn it off right there and let's see what we got Alright, so that's basically what I go through when I take a sample and how I warp it and everything. Um, if you have bass lines that are samples, it's the same way. Um, just always remember, warp it first. Warp it first. Don't think about chopping it or anything. Make sure that the whole sample itself is in tempo, then chop it. Because after you do that, once your warp markers are in place, Ableton... You can do whatever you want to with it. You can slow it down. You can speed it up. You can take it wherever you want to. So basically all there is to remember with that. So give it a try. Let me know um, how it goes. Even if you make a track, let me hear it. Because I'm always down to listen to new tracks. And I'll give you some feedback on that. So don't forget, guys. Subscribe. Send me some questions. And I'll hit that up. All right. Peace.